I guess maybe just looking back on the, on the, on the campaign a little bit, I just want to generally kind of, what are some of the things that you learned uh, that the campaign kind of taught you? Yeah. Uh, well, one of the best things that happened in the campaign for me was all the coffee hours that I held and you know, meeting with voters who I, many of whom I didn't know, mm -hmm. and having conversations with them and realizing that I need to do more of that, that, um, that sometimes you get caught up in the day-to-day -day work here and, and it's hard to get out and have those kinds of conversations. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on how to do that more often because yeah. I think it was very helpful to me. And uh, I got to hear from a lot of people about what they're thinking mm -hmm. and hear their questions and concerns yeah. and, and to explain some of the reasons why I have the positions that I have yeah. and what my accomplishments have been. So I found that to be very helpful. Yeah. And kind of a similar question is, and you alluded to it just there, but are there are there things that the campaign that you'll that you'll change about the way that you well, I think one of those things is getting out more and trying to figure out how to have those smaller conversations with people. Mm -hmm. And I've done it around the budget, but I think I need to do it more often around yeah. other issues too. Yeah. And I know in the in the during the campaign you talked about a, a strong council and, right. um, um, and kind of how the two play off of each other. Very important to have a council that's active and engaged and helping drive the process. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking forward to working with a new council who's going to take on uh, some of these process questions. I, I think they're well poised to do that. Yeah. I'm sorry that Bob Reckman won't be there. He was so involved in the best practices um, committee and the best practices work. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that he won't be there to continue that work since he was one of the key people in that process. But I know that David Narkowitz will continue that work along with other counselors. Mm -hmm. What about the new council makeup? I mean, you got four new faces. Right. Uh, I think that's healthy for the city. Yeah. I mean, certainly. You know, I had uh, my preferences in terms of who I would have liked to have seen elected, but I, mm -hmm. I can work with anybody, and I'm looking forward to working with this council. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, in terms of the 49 some odd percent voters who right. voted for Michael, kind of, I suspect that, that one of the challenges you might face is how, how do you kind of unite the city behind right. you? I mean, right. do you have a message for those voters? Well, I'm, you know, once once I'm elected as mayor, I'm elected as mayor for everybody in the city, and so I'll continue to try to understand what their needs and, mm -hmm. and wants are and, and to the extent that I can try to meet the, to work with them to meet those needs. Mm -hmm. I think some of those votes, however, were for things that I've already done that people were unhappy about and I can't really change those things. Mm -hmm. So the Smith College overlay or the hotel or those things are, are decisions that have already been taken. Yeah. And I can understand that people may have been unhappy about them and may have chosen to vote for my opponent because of that. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm elected to govern for everyone, and I'll, I'll do my best to do that. Yeah. Uh, in terms of challenges ahead for for the city? I think the first and most obvious challenge is going to be the budget. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have a better sense of where we are. Uh, we need to keep watching the 9C cuts, mm -hmm. the um, governor's unilateral mid-year cuts. We'll see if he wants to do anything more on local aid. We already know that we're going to lose a little bit of money from, from the Quinn bill and from the some education accounts, um, which I think we'll be all right on. If there's any deeper mid-year cuts, we'll be struggling. And mm -hmm. then, of course, we'll know by third Wednesday in January, I think it is, that the governor's budget comes out, and we'll know then what our picture, begin to be, understand the revenue picture for next year. I'm assuming no new state aid. And, and so we've begun gathering budget data from the departments to start putting together some projections. And you're starting that already, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we started it uh, last month. Okay. And any word we on haven't the started on the departmental level. We've actually started it, um, uh, it, it really, since so much is driven by payroll, we're working on, on trying to pull the payroll numbers together, which we don't necessarily need all the department heads involved with yet. Okay. Uh, but in terms of mid-year cuts, the governor has not... Not yet, and I hope he doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, other other challenges or priorities? Well, your... obviously there is a, uh, the community is uh, split on the question on the landfill. Mm -hmm. the, I think the non-binding advisory question was will be somewhat useful in terms of helping to think about the discussion. But I'm sorry that, and it, I think some of this is my fault, that we framed it as landfill, no landfill. It's really, the question is what do we do about our trash? And mm -hmm. so we have the option study that lays out a number of options for what we can do with our trash, and we need to have that conversation as a community. and. 
I think part of the problem with framing the landfill as a, per a permit vote by the council is it has excluded the council from the conversation and they need to be an integral part of the conversation. So we need to figure out how to get them back in the conversation. Could that be something like David Narkowitz tried to I do? I think or? David Narkowitz tried very, very yeah. well to try, you know, made a valiant effort to try to bring them back in and we need to really think about that yeah. um, to, because they need to reflect what they're hearing from their constituents. When you talk about when you say we need to think about that, would that be before the the BPW well, moves I, forward? Well, at, at this point, um, I think the next step is to really uh, the DPW and the Board of Public Works is looking at the five options that are laid out in the option study. So we need to um, figure out a way to have a bigger public conversation about the option study okay. and quantify the costs and the benefits, environmental and monetary, to the community. Yeah, yeah. Um, do, do, any idea on the on the timeline? Um, I, I need to sit down with department heads, and, uh, the DPW folks, and, and um, not the other department heads, just the DPW folks, and, I, and, and the board there. I may need to go to a board meeting and talk to them about how we're going to do that. I haven't, haven't really laid that out yet. Okay. And there's been talk, and I think from a lot of different areas, that uh, the landfill probably will close no matter what is decided. We're, running, we're bumping up against the timeline, which means it may very well close. But um, we need to look at... Um, at, 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 in any of it, we need to look at a transfer station. We have we have a transfer station at the DPW. Now, what do we do um, about that? We we've been working with the state to acquire the parcel that's just below the DPW, the old state yard, and we are just about done with that acquisition and to to site a transfer station and recycling center there, including a swap shop which came up during the debate, and yeah. that would be hopefully where we would have all that. Okay. Um, and we're just about at the end of that. So we need to sort of put all these options out on the table and figure out where we are. And that could take place in a, in a big community forum type I don't thing think that, it, I, I think that there has to be a, 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 a framing of the questions for the community and that there may be a series of community meetings. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm also really going to hope that the newspaper is able to lay out the questions very clearly. I think one thing about this debate, um, about the... Um, about the question on the ballot is that I don't think it was well covered by anybody because mm -hmm. the there was so much on, else on the ballot. All right. Yeah. And I really think that this needs as much coverage as we possibly can get. Are you talking about each option? Or I'm talking about the, all of the options and yeah. what the costs and benefits are, and I yeah. think we need to really have people informed on that. Yeah. And not everybody can come to a meeting. Yeah. So meetings are not necessarily the way to get the broadest public input. Yeah. Everybody I talked to yesterday said, said they voted no. I was up in the ward six or mm -hmm. seven, but a lot of them um, didn't know much. About right. The land folks, right. Right. And you know we're dependent on on the newspaper to and the newspapers to get the information out. So we need to work on how to get what information needs to be out there for people to make good decisions about what our options are okay. for our trash. Uh, any other any other priorities that you see? Um, well, we're going to come and continue on some of the projects that we've been working on. Um, we, uh, I'm hopeful that we can move ahead on uh, acquiring land to, to put some to to do some soccer fields and mm -hmm. some other fields that we, we have a shortage of in the city, and I'm optimistic about that. Mm -hmm. um, the James House project, I'm thrilled that we're moving ahead on that, and um, some of the one program's already in there. Mm -hmm. We um, we just received a grant yesterday to help us on that project from the Beverage Foundation. Uh, Terry Anderson can tell you more about that okay. at some point. Okay. Um, again, this is at no cost to the city, but it's a good project for the city. Yeah. Um, again, uh, commuter rail was something, I, and, and rail in general mm -hmm. was something I talked about during the election. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about that and, and its uh, benefits to the city. Mm -hmm. We'll continue work on that. And is that the uh, kind of the stretch? The, the north-south north rail. South, okay. uh, yeah. And then finally, I haven't given up on the building of the police station. We're continuing to look to find um, any other f sources of revenues, to f state or federal, to see if we can't build that. Yeah, yeah.